Welcome to our webinar on Electroflow. TES International has been around for uh, almost 20 years now, and the company has been committed to both software development and services uh, throughout that time. Our main specialty areas are thermal management of electronics, um, both through our software and through consulting services. We also offer uh, general heat, heat transfer, CFD, stress, and vibration analysis. And the last part is custom software solutions or any automation tool development for our own packages or for other people's packages. Electroflow has been around since 1996 commercially. It was actually uh, the reason for the start of the company. And the uh, original creator, Ben Zandi, of the software is, is still the uh, CTO of TES International. Looking here at some of the dif differentiating features, uh, coupled electrical thermal analysis is one of our critical features, and uh, we'll talk in quite some depth about that later. Um, we have an automatic application and calculation of radiative view factors using a uh, patented approach uh, that allows you to quickly have a radiative network. All boundary conditions can be applied non-linear loads uh, using both tables and functions. We have a multi-system analysis approach, which allows you to have uh, completely separate systems modeled together uh, where they're coupling. So say you have a rack system, you could have um, several different electronics boxes all be modeled in, in, different, uh, in different models and then that coming together. And finally, we do have heat exchanger modeling. To get things started, we're just going to look at a quick overview video of how to actually put a model together in Electroflow. So we start off by setting our parameters. We choose our units, we set our tolerance, and uh, we go through and set our initial ambient condition. Next, we're actually going to bring in a, a CAD file. This can be created from uh, any uh, third-party CAD package. You could also create geometry within the Electroflow environment itself. Uh, here we select the PCB and we're going to give it a, a user defined material of PCB and um, we then bring that in. That's going to defeature anything based on the um, resolution that we bring it in with. Um, that material will then later define. Now we uh, select another, we select the, the PCU components and uh, we'll quickly bring this in. And as, as you can see in this, uh, these parts aren't being really defeatured because they're already defeatured, but if there were any fillets uh, any tiny holes or anything like that and you use a larger um, tolerance those will actually be ignored as they don't have much meaning uh, thermally. So now we're going to bring in a uh, plastic housing uh, of a fan that we're going to have on top of on top of this heat sink here to cool the component. Uh, so we'll define this as plastic so this is going to be around our fan and then this other block here is actually going to be the the fan itself. So we're going to create this and then we're, we'll use this to, s to define a fan boundary condition. Finally, we actually have the fins left and we're going to go through and select all of these and use a copper material. And it's going to go through then and it'll take this name that we give it and it'll just increment them and so you have fin 1, fin 2 and, and so on. And then we can have that all in one part. Uh, so we can quickly uh, manipulate it if we need to. Okay, so as as this brings this in, um, we can now see our geometry here, and this is our thing. So we can go ahead and accept this. And at any point you're not happy with the way it brought something in, you can hit retry, changing the parameters, or just uh, cancel that part. So now we can see the geometry actually in Electroflow. And we're going to take all of these fins and just for the simplicity of this model, we're going to change them to 2D. Uh, so at the moment, they're very thin 3D plates, but we'll uh, immediately go through here, change it to 3D, and we're going to just sort of collapse them into the, to the center of the object. And now we can see this. So it has the same uh, heat transfer surface area. Um, it will affect the pressure a little bit coming through the fan. Uh, but in this case, we're not too worried about that. We're just uh, just trying to really look at how much heat heat the um, heat sink is going to be given off. Okay, so now we actually add the the heat to the chip, and this could be uh, 
any kind of function and like that but in this case we're just going to add in a, a fixed value and we, we select that block you could also specify it to a region or select many blocks and, uh, and put it across all of those one of the cool little features of, of electroflow is solid resistance and, and what that allows you to do is go through and select any solid and have a resistance to either everything or to specific solids and and if it's everything here we can see it's in any different order and then we're going to select plastic and give it a, a small thickness so so we're using um, 0.1 millimeter thickness to everything meaning that it's going to basically make a boundary condition around this object of plastic and then that will affect both thermal and electrical properties of that so without adding any extra elements we've in essence put a case around our around our block and that will affect the CFD and um, it will affect the conduction so now we're actually defining the fan we select that fan block we're going to enter in a fan curve these can be found in the, the data sheets of uh, any fan uh, you can also just do a fixed flow rate if you if you know about how much flow you're going to be getting we then uh, decide that we're going to have a circular fan here so we give it a diameter and we're just going to keep it right in the center of the block uh, we won't worry about the swirl of this fan uh, but we will give a little hub diameter here with uh, not not worrying about the power that's actually coming from the hub you can see here it's actually in the wrong uh, orientation so we'll uh, modify that make sure it's in the negative y direction so it's actually going to be blowing uh, down on the on the object and one thing to be careful in this is to make sure that your gravity is always always in the right direction in this case gravity is actually going to be um, coming down in the y direction um, okay so now we go through and define our materials we're going to use an orthotropic material for the PCB with a, a lower conductivity going through the plane and that's because uh, we have some traces in this that we're not actually going to be modeling uh, you, you certainly could model them. you could read in the, the um, ECAD data but in this case we're not um, and then um, for the other value we're just using 100 just a, a regular isotropic material Okay, so here we have a quick look at our mesh. This is just the automatic mesh created by Electroflow. Looks okay. Uh, there are some tools for modifying the mesh if you need to, but in this case, that won't be required. And as we run it, uh, you can see there's a lot of information given back here, um, but the critical stuff here is on the front screen and the, the convergence comes down nicely. And now we can uh, read in our results. And uh, here you can see cut planes uh, going through the model. And you can see how the, the flow is coming in here right through the fan. Uh, quickly it's being redirected and, and uh, going out of the model. Anything, any place on the outside of your model where there isn't a solid, it assumes is a um, open region uh, where, flow, where air can either go in or out, um, depending, on the, depending on how the pressure of the CFD ends up um, working. You know, change our spectrum uh, just to a local spectrum so we're just looking uh, at the, the min and the max of that cup plane so you can see the spectrum itself is actually changing which uh, allows us to, to get a better uh, a better look at, at any plane okay so um, that's it for this model Next, we're going to uh, have a look at some model building tools. Uh, as mentioned before, we can bring in STEP files, IGS, uh, STL files. Uh, we can also bring in ECAD data for like Gerber files, ODB++. Um, the meshing is automated. You can separate the mesh for both the solid and the fluid region. Um, so if you have very thin solid layers, that's not going to affect your fluid region. Um, the, the radiation is automated. You can have any user-defined solids or fluid properties. Uh, those could be temperature dependent. They could be um, orthotropic. And there are also uh, our libraries um, within Electroflow that are included. Um, <coughs> now we see uh, some of the other tools we have. We looked at fans. So you can also create vents and resistances. All units uh, for everything in Electroflow are customizable. So you can make sure that you're working in the units you're used to. And you can create uh, 2D objects, enclosures, complex shapes, and uh, coordinate frames. One of our, our main tools, which we kind of get a, a look at uh, indirectly later on, is the model manager. And this allows you to see everything in your model. 
and uh, the boundary conditions and the, the solids. And then from that, um, we can actually go through and change the material of everything. You could hide or unhide something, apply boundary conditions to those solids, um, or just look at results and, and do some like sorting by the power, sorting by the temperature, things like that. Uh, we also have a lot of error checking routines. You can create a session file uh, in Electroflow to run any kind of script. Um, we have uh, you can uninclude and include things, and and what this means is like if you're if you're unincluding something, it's no longer going to be used in the analysis. It'll still be in your model, um, so you can very quickly run what if scenarios, and that works for both geometry and boundary conditions. Uh, and you can use uh, sensor points or or group any solids together. Um, we can quickly switch uh, between 2D and 3D solids with little tools. Uh, there's a thing for deleting all unused objects. So if you had empty solids, uh, empty assemblies, they'll be removed. Um, you can color by anything, and we'll see that a little bit later. Region fill allows you to remove um, very small uh, flow regions, say, underneath a component that you don't want to to waste time solving CFD for if it, so you can you can quickly remove that um, and you can undo and, and redo uh, up to uh, five five different levels. As I mentioned, all boundary conditions can have nonlinear loads, and here we just get a look at the the function form. So you create a polynomial, sinusoidal, or exponential function. Uh, you can also multiply several functions together um, or multiply a function with a table. And uh, that, that allows you to, to really model most things. And, and currently, you can um, vary those based on temperature, time, or spatially. Uh, we will be, in the next release, increasing that uh, so that you can also include pressure, uh, velocity, and uh, any other um, solver properties that you may want. These are uh, most of the standard boundary conditions you'll see in all packages. So I, I'll just touch on. Um, touch on the wire connection here what that actually allows you to do is create a wire um, outlet to your model so if you have uh, say you know that you have a terminal block coming in you know the gauge of your wire you know how much currents coming through that and and you know what environment it's in you you might not know is that going to be a heat source to my model? Is that going to be a heat sink to my model? So generally, it's it's just ignored. But here, you can very quickly put it in just by specifying those things. And it will determine whether or not that wire is going to be getting hot and therefore heating up your model a little bit, or whether it's going to stay cold and it's, it's just going to be a way for the heat to, to like siphon off of your model. OK, so next, we're going to look into coupled thermal uh, voltage. This is our main feature. And what this allows you to do is automatically calculate for the Julian heating or the, the I squared R heating in your model. Um, this is uh, critical for avoiding over design because uh, a lot of times you have to make assumptions on how much heat you're going to have coming from your traces or where that heat's going to be. Uh, and this also allows you to predict those local hotspots because uh, you might not have much heat being generated across the, across the, tr the traces, but generally where that maximum point is going to be might be where your hottest component is as well and and you'll see these little bends where uh, suddenly your your trace your pcb is going to get hot it's going to prevent um your component actually from cooling through that as well um, through any like thermal vias you have anything like that um, the process of this is that we we actually solve the voltage field in parallel with the temperature field and um so while everything's being updated, the electrical properties are going to be updated for temperature. And because of how that works, because of the, the fact that the electrical properties are actually so temperature dependent, and as the temperature increases, the resistivity increases as well, uh, that allows you allows a sort of runaway approach uh, to happen if, if, not, um, if not taken into account for, because the more, the hotter it gets, the more power you're creating, which actually makes it hotter again and therefore creates more power and here we can see a little paper that we've done where you um, this is for iTherm where we actually model it uh, with a coupled approach and then on the other side we're just having to make assumptions of where we thought the board was going to be so that's just giving one temperature across the board and is using that property and you can see that there's a 
fairly large difference, like a couple of watts of difference in heat, which leads to a eight degree temperature temperature difference, which in this case was actually predicting uh, failure or success based on. And uh, this effect uh, through a transient approach, you, you can see how it's, as the temperature is increasing, it's becoming stronger and, and stronger. So if you do have a, a large temperature range, this can become a, a very difficult to model with the traditional approach. Now we're going to look at a, a quick model here of a, a coupled um, electrical voltage model. Um, here we see just a, a bus bar with three currents coming in, one voltage going out. Uh, we have a a convection put over the whole thing uh, so that it, we have some temperature to it and uh, here you can see the heat that's being generated just from the Julian heating and this is the voltage that's been solved according to that as all it comes through so you don't have to say how much current is going where you just say where it's coming in and here we see those hot spots that I was talking about uh, as all the current tries to tries to take the shortest path and and so you get a much higher current at that point here we see more of a, a similar model to, to what most of our customers would be running. Uh, it's kind of a simplified version of, of a, a lot of the like junction box where we have a relay, we have a fuse, we have some bus bars, and here we can look at the circuits of both of those. And looking at this, uh, for both circuit, we have a one current boundary condition and one voltage boundary condition. And um, from that you can you can look at the boundary conditions you can create a group of those and if you create a group of that you can then come into our uh, model manager here and, and have a, a quick look just look at all of the solids and boundary conditions within that model and and here we go and we're gonna uh, just show show one of those um, so you can then color by those circuits or make sure you don't have any <coughs> excuse me to make sure you don't have any uh, shorts or or any disconnects in your circuits. Okay, so so looking at this circuit here, we can see the uh, see those yellow lines. That's actually a, a link, and and we'll go and look at that link later. That's uh, one of the critical components of of Electroflow. It really allows allows you to do a lot of modeling. But first, let's look at all the boundary conditions associated to it. So the, we all, all the heat is coming from the current, the voltage, but we do have uh, convection boundary conditions. We have some um, th some thermal resistance planes here, and the the voltage boundary condition, and then the, the radiation boundary condition. So for radiation, we have a radiation network, so that'll automatically be determined. But for the external, we're actually applying radiation to ambient on on the outside of it for this model. And uh, here we look at the functions, and these functions are going to be used to determine how much heat is actually be created through the fuse or um, through the coil of the relays and it's going to take take that resistance then and determine the amount of current flowing through that here in our link definition which is being used to model the current or it could be used to model a lead or a wire um, anywhere where you don't actually want to model the geometry you just want to jump something between two points and it'll automatically determine uh, squaring that current and multiplying it by the function that is the resistance and that resistance is going to change with temperature to determine how much heat we have being dumped into the component and then that's dumped into a, an area of the component as you can see here so we have our our hot spot of our relay um, and the, the fuse is also giving off some heat and then through the through the actual uh, circuits themselves we can look in a look at the voltage plot and uh, here you'll see you're going to see where the uh, where the temperature is, or by the side where the voltage is changing. First, let's uh, just look at the circuits. We'll get rid of everything that's non-electrical in this view, and um, that'll kind of help us to to see how the voltage changes. You have your 14 volts is where it's starting from, and then it's dropping uh, naturally as the as the current's flowing through it, as we have the current losses. Um, and as it's dropping, it is actually creating heat uh, for those points as well. Here we have a, a little file that's showing us the heat that's being generated from those links, and this is being put into a node which is uh, centralized in the component itself. Um, you can see quite a lot of, of heat actually being generated in these components um, and automatically determined. So I, I touched really on the, the thermal electrical network there, the the links, um, and 
this allows you to sort of combine the two different methods. You have your, your finite volume method, your 3D method, but we also do have this RC network, um, resistive capacitance network. So it's it's like a like an electrical network, and it does actually have the electrical bars and the thermal bars. But uh, if you created a wire with a thickness of, of something and then um, you give it its material, then it'll determine what the resistance through that's going to be. And if you say so, it'll actually determine how much heat will be generated in that wire if it happens to have electrical um, properties going through it. We also have an integrated flow network. Uh, this is our, our heat exchanger model. You can use this to uh, use CFD um, plots to determine things. You can bring in heat exchanger performance charts. And you can see how the temperature of the fluid as it flows through is actually increasing, and it's pulling the heat out of the model. So our solver allows for both steady state and transient analysis. Um, it does solve conduction, convection, and radiation. You can look at force, natural, and mixed convec conduct, uh, convection. And um, as I mentioned with the, the radiation, uh, the, the, the patented part of it actually is that, that you're patching um, elements together. So you're not solving it. You're not solving every element individually. You're actually solving a group of, of elements at once that, that will then have a similar temperature, and it'll use the average temperature of that for the, for the radiation network, which uh, allows it to solve uh, much faster. Um, we do have a, a parallel solver. It's uh, automatically uh, parallelized and uh, allows you to break it up, break up into multiple regions. As I mentioned before, flow and solid can be modeled separately. Uh, each voltage circuit will actually be modeled separately as well. Uh, <coughs> and uh, frozen CFD means that you can actually, uh, at any point during your analysis, stop your flow calculations and just maintain that velocity. So if you think that um, the temperature is already fairly stabilized. We're not going to have much change in our natural convection. Or if it's a forced convection, uh, you can stop those at any point and then continue to update uh, for temperature, both for your solid and your fluid. So your fluid temperatures will still update. It's just the momentum portion of the fluid will not be updated. Um, Multi-system allows, as I mentioned, to, to have several different things all modeled in one. So if we look at this, each of these boxes is a completely separate model. And uh, they're all placed into one overall global model. And then that's run together. So if you have different people working on things, you could do your analysis and then uh, bring it in just to kind of take away the, the boundary condition and extend that a little bit more. So no, no package will be complete without post-processing. Obviously, this is what we end up showing to everyone. And uh, we're going to look at a, a video here uh, showing some of our features. So we've seen the cup planes. Um, and here we, we see a, a more complex model how you can do cup planes. You can see the, the velocity vectors uh, being created in 2D. You can turn those off. Um, and uh, just to, to clean it up, you can include the fluid in the plot. So you can actually see how the temperature of the fluid is changing. Um, we can also label minimum and max points. And this will update every time you change the plane. It'll show you where your min point is, where your max point is, and then at what value you are. And this is good for if you're just going to quickly come through, take some snapshots to throw in a report. Um, and it'll help people to, to draw their eyes to, to where that hotspot is and, and immediately see what, what that is as well. Here we look in uh, in 3D, and um, through the 3D you can you can rotate around uh, everything like that. Obviously, you can really get inside of the objects, and something that you can't do in testing really is is see what's going on inside. So uh, here we're just going to go through, look in our model manager, and we're going to sort by temperature. So this has the the max and the average temperatures of all of the components in our model, and we're looking uh, just at the relays now, and we're just going to include all of the relays that are over uh, 150 degrees and and so we'll we'll hide everything else and um, as we come through and look at that uh, you can now see that um, just just those components are drawn we can see the temperature of those and it allows you to kind of quickly go in and, and see what's happening uh, maybe they're getting hot because of something's around them um, things like that uh, Another tool that we have that's, that's kind of cool is you can set critical and warning temperatures of, of any component. And um, 
by doing that, you can then draw a plot of that, and we can color things red, yellow, or green, or whatever colors you want. And instead of just looking at your hotspot as being wherever the hottest component in your model is, it will actually show you red being the warning spot. So it, you may have a component that is fine up to 180 degrees, something else that is going to fail at 125. So if they were both at 130, you don't care about the one that's going to 180, but you certainly do about the one that's going to 125. So this allows you to, to look at, uh, at what, you, what you have. Um, from this, we can we can still treat everything like our model. We can just continue, really continue actually modeling if we wanted to uh, from this color. Uh, but we can hide things. Uh, we can also make something transparent. So here we'll actually go through and make some blocks uh, transparent. And this is just going to be the whole case that we're making transparent. And uh, that'll allow us to sort of see what's going on. Uh, inside of our model while still having that up. So this makes a very nice um, plot for report since it's transparent you can easily see the, the yellow and the red um, inside of it. So if you have any uh, trouble spots inside of there you can you can see that. Okay so next uh, we're gonna have a look <coughs> at um, another model here. Uh, this is a uh, model brought in from CAD, and uh, it doesn't look exactly as the CAD did, but we can draw back onto that CAD, as shown here, and, and then show anything, temperature um, or uh, voltage or anything that you want to look at. And, and that'll use an uh, algorithm to automatically, um, automatically go through and, and determine what that temperature of that surface would be. So it's only using that solid to map, this, map it to the CAD. Uh, it's not just using whatever element happens to be closest to it. Okay, and then from this we can uh, change the range, and, and I'm just going to give it a, a user range here. Um, so say we're really just interested in in everything between 140 and 130 degrees. Anything below 130, we're not so worried about. Anything above 140 is failing, and and that allows you to to quickly see trouble spots as well. Just uh, if you don't have all of your critical temperatures to enter in um, during the analysis. So the next thing we're going to look at are a couple of the. Uh, tools that uh, Electroflow has. Um, the first one is the planar, um, planar region results. And with this, we can select any plane in our model. And uh, then we can go through and actually get a lot of information from this, from this plane or this, this region. So we could look at the area beneath a component, or we could look at uh, um, event um, or just in this case we're just kind of looking at a, a random area within our model and then that'll show us the temperatures of both fluid and solid of that region it'll show us the velocity at that point um, the flow rate the enthalpy that's going through it it'll also show us the conduction and the, the heat flux of that plane uh, then we can also look at volumetric regions and uh, that's doing it's showing you different information, but basically the same idea. And we could look at uh, look then at power. We could look at mass um, and volume, and then we can look at just the solid of that region or just the fluid as well. So the the final thing to look at here is is say we want to do a, a video, an animation. So for animations, we're using ParaView. This is a open source package that's uh, freely available. And um, as you bring this in, as, as you read it in, it'll come straight in from Electroflow. It's going to bring it in how you how you need it, and then we can look at a uh, animation here. So, so all of this has been read in without us having to do anything for it. Uh, it's a, a very powerful tool because of all of the filters that they allow you to do. Um, they have a, a whole spectrum of, of filters that can be applied to any different region, and you can apply filters on on filters. And uh, for this, we're just going to look at a, a simple cup plane. <coughs> and um, so you can take a cup plane of anything, and then you can continue your animation from that so that you can actually look at, at what's going on um, in that section of the model. You could change where that cup plane is dynamically during your, during your analysis or during your animation. And uh, 
here we can see the it's not very useful for for this simplistic uh, bus bar but that does give you a lot of power So in conclusion, uh, we are always here uh, for you. Uh, we do offer consulting services, as I mentioned. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Uh, we're happy to, to help you get going on any thermal modeling that you may have. And we're always looking to improve. So if you think that something from our package is missing, if, if there's some tool that will make things easier for you, um, then please do let us know. Thank you.